Hello, this is uh, Travis Hutchinson, Wayne County Sheriff, Worcester, Ohio. Yesterday, we had an incident with a deputy involved in a shooting. We gave a written press release yesterday evening, and today uh, we would like to give you a little bit of uh, more information that we've uh, gathered. Um, we have BCI, Bureau of Criminal Investigation, currently investigating, and it's no going investigation with us and uh, myself personally have not had a chance to review any of the body camera footage but uh, Captain Hunter has and I'm going to let him answer any further questions that you have that uh, he can also uh, give you the uh, briefing of what he's gathered at this point. Okay. Okay, thank you. As Sheriff Hutchinson indicated, there was a press release that was put out yesterday afternoon that resolved an incident that unfolded yesterday morning in the village of Apple Creek where officers from our, our deputies from our office as well as officers from the Apple Creek Police Department initially responded to a man who was threatening suicide with a handgun. Upon our deputy's arrival, the deputy located the man behind a business in the downtown area of Apple Creek. The man was essentially sitting on a piece of electrical equipment uh, behind the business, uh, armed with a handgun, and he indicated that he did not want to uh, interact with the deputies. He wanted them to go away. And initially, they did not see the handgun, but then he displayed the handgun and held it to his head, asking again that the deputies leave him alone or he was going to shoot himself. Obviously, the deputies were not going to leave the man alone. They were concerned for his safety asking him numerous times to put the handgun down, which he refused to do. At one point, the man got up and began to walk away from the deputies and uh, walked across the street, which was Route 250 in Apple Creek. Uh, Sunday morning, traffic was not as heavy on that route as what ordinarily it would be. However, there were numerous vehicles that drove by as the man was walking across the street, again, armed with a handgun, pointed at his, at his head all the while refusing the commands of the deputies to stop and put the gun down so that they could help him. The man continued up the side street to a car wash, where again he was very verbal with the deputies, uh, telling them that they were going to have to shoot him, and all the while again they're telling him to put his gun down, telling, them that he, telling the man that they would like to help him, get him the help, and that he was not going to be arrested. The man would not have any of that and then walked away from the deputies again and went in the direction of a small dollar store which is located again in the downtown area of Apple Creek. All the while uh, the man's refusing to comply with the request of the officers there who at this point have been joined by three troopers from the Ohio State Highway Patrol. So now we've got a total of six or seven officers at this point asking this man to put his gun down stop and so forth. Again, he's refusing this, continues to walk away from the dollar store, ultimately ending up on uh, High Street in Apple Creek and next to another business. Now, we were very concerned about the fact that there's a church very close by to this particular incident. This man is armed with a handgun, threatening to shoot himself, threatening to create a situation where the deputies were going to have to shoot him. So we went from a man who we arrived to help when he was threatening suicide when our first encounter to a man who is now posing a risk of danger to the residents nearby. Uh, again, deputies continued to ask this man to stop. He, he continued to refuse. At one point, he was telling the deputy to shoot him, using words, go ahead, do it, do it. And uh, he stopped temporarily while he was saying those words and they continued against the deputy's commands to uh, start to walk away. He was at this point very close to the deputies that were involved. I would say an estimated 30 to 40 feet of distance between he and the deputy that fired the shot, as well as another deputy and a trooper who were directly in front of this man. One of our deputies then fired one shot from a rifle, which instantly ended this confrontation. The man was struck in the arm. He was struck in the arm that held the firearm, and the bullet uh, passed through his arm, striking him into the chest causing the man to go down and drop the firearm. Deputies then immediately started to perform first aid on the man, CPR, applied his chest seal to his side, 
while they're waiting for the EMS responders to arrive. Uh, unfortunately, after the EMS arrived and transported him to the hospital, the man uh, apparently was pronounced dead at the hospital. The man is 60 years old. His name is Rodney, R-O-D-N-E-Y, J. Geyser, G-E-I-S-E-R, with an address of 123 West Main Street in Apple Creek. This is a man that does have a, a record with our office, a number of minor infractions. However, in the 2000s, we encountered this man and made an arrest where he was threatening suicide and fired several rounds off in the house when he was threatening family members. Mm -hmm. So he is not a stranger to our office. However, we have not had recent contact with this man. At this point, uh, we have asked the Ohio Bureau of Investigation to conduct the investigation into this matter that was put in the press release yesterday. And this morning, I had the opportunity to speak with Wayne County Prosecutor Dan Lutz, who indicated that he was going to ask the Ohio Attorney General's Office to assign a special prosecutor to look into this particular case. We at the Sheriff's Office feel that our deputy did nothing wrong. In fact, we feel that he perhaps saved the lives of others by stopping this man whose ultimate intentions were unknown. Clearly, this man refused multiple, uh, I don't want to say requests, he refused multiple orders from law enforcement to drop his gun so that he could receive help and, of course, not present a risk to anybody else. So our deputy did what we felt like he needed to do. It was unfortunate, but this man was given multiple opportunities to end this in a nonviolent manner. At this point, I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Are you receiving any information about the deputy, how long he's been on the force or anything? This is a very experienced deputy. I did not refer to his personnel file to get his uh, time in service, but I believe he's, he's worked here at least 10 years. Is he on paid administrative leave during this investigation? Yes, he is on paid administrative leave. Uh, today would actually be a day off for this deputy, anyway, by our schedule. But he's on his paid administrative leave, which means that he is available to us for any type of interview that we're going to do. I know within the next few days, DCI is going to sit down with him and do an extensive interview on this situation. Are you going to release his name or no? Not at this time. Okay. Did you know about Rodney when you went to when you went downtown? Did you know? Had you looked up his background when you were responding? Did you know about his past? No, we did not know about his past at that time. At, it was one of these situations where we respond to situ these types of situations routinely. People that are threatening to harm themselves with firearms or other means. And we have a very good track record with uh, bringing these cases to conclusion. Our goal is to get these people the medical help that they need for uh, whatever is causing them to feel the way that they have. The officer, actually all three of our deputies that were present at the scene had advanced training in uh, what's called CIT training, critical incident training. So they are specialized in dealing with, or have trained and specialized with dealing with people that have mental illness. And we have, a, like I said, a great track record with taking people to the hospital as opposed to jail when they're making these types of threats to harm themselves. What kind of weapon did he have? Do you know? Are you he had a semi-automatic nine millimeter pistol. Uh, which he was carrying in his hand uh, throughout this incident, had the gun pointed at his head most of the time. Did he ever aim it at an officer, or was it pretty much at his head? Pretty much at his head the entire time. And you said the deputy fired from a rifle? Yes, the deputy fired from a, a semi-automatic rifle that he carries with him, uh, again, at a distance of probably about 30 to 40 feet. Uh, and do you have any sense of how long the BCI investigation will take? It's always difficult to talk about another agency's investigation as far as how long it's going to take. Uh, we typically will tell, tell people to take as long as it takes to get, get a clear understanding of what took place and get your investigation uh, completed. I know there's a number of officers that need to be spoken to in this case, there's forensic evidence that we invest, need to be analyzed. And of course, the Wayne County Coroner, Amy Jollop, is involved in this case as well. So I can't really tell you how long it's going to take. I'm basing my uh, comments to you today as a result of watching uh, all the video or body camera video from the officer. So I wasn't there. I, I wanted to get this information out as quick as possible because people want answers when these things happen. Can you talk about how hard this is? I mean, especially for the deputy involved in a situation like this, nobody wants this kind of outcome. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think it's very obvious. It's very difficult. The deputy involved in this case is one of the most compassionate deputies that we have here. Uh, has small children of his own, and uh, 
I don't think anybody can put themselves into his shoes, but he arrived at that location to utilize his training as a crisis intervention officer to de-escalate this situation and potentially save this man's life. It's ironic that instead of this man's life being saved, he created a situation where his life was taken by the very deputy who was there to help him. Uh, and the, the deputy who fired the shot, was Mr. Geyser walking towards him when he fired the shot? The, the deputy who fired the shot was at a right angle to Mr. Geyser. It struck him in his uh, right arm. Mr. Geyser was walking towards another deputy and a state trooper. All, all three of these deputies were in about the same distance from Mr. Geyser at the time that the shot was fired. So the deputy didn't fear for his life. It was more about de-escalating what could have happened. Is that right? I, I can't comment on what he was feeling right. because I, I haven't talked to him in depth, but he was then in a situation where he had to put a stop to the actions of this man who was wandering around this downtown area, a residential area as well, and uh, had not complied with the orders of the command. Certainly, anytime you have a person with a firearm within 30 to 40 feet of you, even if they're not pointing the firearm, they can quickly change that and place that into a situation. We're in a, a situation here where we're not going to wait for something to unfold. We're going to take uh, proactive action when it was justified. We, we arrived with the goal of protecting this man from self-harm. It shifted from protecting him to protecting other members of the public. Uh, and you said there was a church nearby. Do you know if there was a service going on while this was unfolding? I can only assume that there was. With everything that was taking place yesterday, I did not take the time to make sure the services were uh, on, on schedule. But again, this whole event taking place between the hours of about quarter till 11 to uh, 11.30. So I think it's safe to say that church probably was in session at that time. And that played into the officer back to the decision. I'm assuming that it does. I did not specifically talk to him about that, but there's uh, one church very close by and another one just a short distance down the road, as well as residences that were near there. So if there was, as this unfolded, where this stop was really the safest location for it to stop as far as uh, a background, straight goals and so forth. Oftentimes people ask, well, why did you not shoot him in the leg or the arm or something like this? Well, in fact, he was shot in the arm. Uh, the bullet passed through and struck in a more vital area. But when law enforcement officers are responding to these types of situations, they, and they're using deadly force, they're doing so to stop the situation. If we shoot to wound, as some people seem to think that we should, we have no control over what happens with that firearm. If he starts shooting, it could possibly injure the officers or residents that are in the nearby homes. So, uh, we generally shoot uh, towards the center, what's called center of mass in the law enforcement terms, but uh, we do not shoot people in the legs. That's not what our training indicates. You know if the suspect leaves behind family or kids? I do not have any great details as far as the family. I believe it was a family member that contacted us. Perhaps his son was contacted, the son contacted us about the original problem. Hey, my father is threatening suicide. Of course, the Apple Creek officer responded first and ask for assistance from our deputies. Do you know which hospital he was taken to? He was taken to the uh, Worcester Community Hospital here in Worcester. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add, Sheriff? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.